While Russia's actions toward Ukraine have provoked the latest rift with NATO, Moscow has at times seen the West as the aggressor. Is that the case here? For more, let's bring in William Pomerantz, Deputy Director of the Kennan Institute for Advanced Russian Studies at the Wilson Center, joining us now from Washington. Thanks so much for being with us. Is Moscow paranoid? My pleasure. Or does it have a point? Well, Russia has a long list of grievances, from its perspective at least, about what NATO has done over the last uh, 10 to 15 years. Um, obviously, you've talked about the expansion eastward. Uh, Russia believes that there were at least implicit promises that that would not occur at the time of the collapse of the Soviet Union. Can I jump in uh, on that very thought? Because Mikhail Gorbachev sure. says it explicitly. He is publicly bitter. He feels like he was toyed with and lied to um, by U.S. authorities who said NATO would not expand. Well, that's Mr. Gorbachev's perspective, and there's no doubt that he appears to have walked away from that, those meetings in 1990 that there would be no expansion. However, the statements that were made were ambiguous. They were related primarily to the question of Germany and not necessarily to all of Eastern Europe. And finally, and most fatally for Russia's from Russia's perspective, uh, none of these conditions were written down on paper. So as events changed, uh, attitudes change, and NATO evolved. Can I so, ask you about someone else? Um, in fact, he, he's the man your institute is named after, George Kennan. He's, he's, he's um, one of the visionaries of American diplomacy. He said expanding NATO would be, and this is a quotation I'm sure you know, a fateful error. Was he right? Did he foresee the kind of problems that, that we're seeing today? Well, like a lot of people, he was very concerned that a expanding NATO would isolate Russia and would cause Russia to respond. Now, NATO has done a lot over the last 10 to 15 years to try to at least maintain open dialogue with Russia. There's been a specific council made between NATO and Russia, and there's been a whole variety of cooperation that has, on the whole, been successful. So why, obviously, I think a lot of people shared Ambassador Kennan's concern about the expansion of NATO. Uh, a lot was done to try to allay those concerns for the Russians. And for the most part, there has been consistent cooperation between the United States and Russia up until this most recent crisis in Ukraine. Can I ask you about um, the latest that we're hearing from NATO, um, which is obviously that it's going to increase its cooperation with its eastern members. It's going to increase, um, the, help the defenses of Ukraine. So NATO is making that announcement at the same time that it's asking Russia to de-escalate the situation. Um, is NATO escalating it, though, do you think? Well, NATO is simply trying to articulate to Russia, I think, what are the potential consequences for any further action by Russia into Ukraine. So I think you, NATO is at least trying to say that it will not in, in, engage militarily because we've had several of our the leaders of NATO, including President Obama, have explicitly said that there's not a military response to what's occurring in Ukraine. But obviously, if Russia does decide to intervene in Ukraine and to enter the mainland, as opposed to just staying in Crimea, then one would anticipate a response from NATO uh, in terms of assistance, but also to provide greater support to some of the Eastern European members of NATO who will feel particularly vulnerable if indeed Russia decides to intervene into mainland uh, Ukraine. What do you think is going to happen? Obviously, tens of thousands of troops are on the border. Is Russia trying to negotiate from a position of strength, or do you think in the Kremlin they are really contemplating another move deeper into Ukraine? Well, I think they are contemplating it, and I think they are identifying the pluses and minuses of such a, an action. Um, obviously, from their perspective, they want to have Ukraine remain within the Russian broad sphere of influence. And as a result of what's occurred in Crimea, Russia now really looks, looks more and more likely that Ukraine will drift more towards the West, and it will sign the association agreement, uh, which started this whole controversy in the first place. So Russia has to be considering what would happen if it were to intervene. But obviously, from the Russian perspective, the potential ramifications and unintended consequences from such an action would be very dramatic indeed. It's still a dangerous time. William Pomerantz of the Wilson Center, thank you so much for talking with us.